This is titled, Are Market Rates Affordable for Portland Apartments? Go ahead and roll it. Well, I found out that just four years ago, the city of Portland issued about 600 permits for new apartments and condos. In 2014, that number rose to 3,600. And the question is, who can afford to live in all these new apartments? In nearly every corner of Portland, new apartments are going up at a dizzying pace. What's driving the number of apartments that are being built in Portland right now? A lot of people looking for a place to live. Wade Lang is regional manager of American Assets Trust, the developers of Hasselow on 8th. More than 600 studio through three bedroom apartments in the heart of the Lloyd Center. The rents haven't been set yet. We will watch the market conditions and uh, and set our rents according to, to what the market dictates. It's got to be affordable or you're not going to get people in there. Plain and simple. I know I couldn't do it. That's not true. At least I don't think. The federal government defines affordable as 30% of your income. We checked and the median income of a family of four in Portland is $69,400. They should be able to afford just over $1,700 in rent. That may be able to get you a two-bedroom apartment in Portland if you get past the waiting list. And there are a lot of Portlanders who make much less than median income. So where do they live? I went to Susan Emmons of the Northwest Pilot Project, which tries to find housing for low-income seniors. Well, all housing is affordable to someone, but if that housing costs 2000 a month, 2500 a month, and you're living on an average income, you're not going to be able to afford that apartment unit. Are okay, you going to be able so to find something? The issue. I, I'm really hoping so. I mean, there are a lot. There's an underreported number of Portlanders that have lost their homes in recent years that people in the local community, some of them, aren't even talking about or thinking about, unless they're, of course, being affected by it personally or someone that they know personally, like a friend or a family member, is actually going through a foreclosure or something to that effect. I want to say this about that. It's interesting, when there are people that go through personal challenges, sometimes it takes someone to actually lose something themselves to help someone out because there are certain people in this city and in this world that are superstitious, that are afraid if they help a friend out that that friend will turn around and start sucking on them. And it's difficult. It's difficult for a lot of people in today's society to help when there are people that will also take advantage of their help. And so there's a climate of distrust, it seems, in our society across the board, uh, whether it be uh, you know, distrust of men, women, the manufactured gender wars, or when we're looking at the manufactured class wars, there's a lot of distrust along those lines. People that have something may be afraid of someone that they fear may rob them or take advantage of them or stay beyond their welcome. And there's also resentment that some people are feeling, which brings us to our next video, video three, towards those that still have something, for example, a house. So we're seeing growing tensions in Portland between the homeless on the streets and people that still have a business, still have a home, people that are driving cars through certain neighborhoods. Uh, go ahead and roll it. Homeless Disturbing Portland Northwest neighborhood Portland so Neighborhood is the title. No longer feel safe. I'm Jeff Giannola. And I'm Ann State. We're talking about the trendy area along Northwest 23rd. Our Jennifer Hoff discovered there's been a string of violence, and we wanted to know what you can do to stay safe. Business owners and shoppers tell me about the homeless on Northwest 21st and 23rd urinating on buildings, on cars. One bartender even told me he got punched. So I took their concerns to Portland police to ask how they can keep safe. Well, I didn't think he'd swing on me. Longtime 21st Avenue bar and grill owner Matt Cordova tells me a homeless man punched him last year after he interrupted Cordova's phone call. We exchanged words. I told mom I'd call her back later and we kind of went at it on the sidewalk and ended up having my eye closed. He has noticed an increasingly younger, angrier, and sober homeless population in this popular part of Portland and doesn't doubt someone will be assaulted again. I don't think that they've got much to fear. Two blocks over, another business manager tells me its employees it's carry mace, like while some like shoppers complain about public lose. urination. Greg Capshaw has lived here for 20 years and blames the homeless for a recent uptick in car break-ins. I came out one morning um, and fell over someone that was camped out there in their sleeping bag. He tells me people don't fix the problem, rather the homeless are pushed in and out of every neighborhood. I'm not sure people have thought about what to do with the homeless 
problem. They just get mad when it infringes on, on their neighborhoods. That's not something we're going to fix. Okay, I found thank out you for from playing Portland that. Police Sergeant Pete and by the way, I've been technically homeless since March of 2014 when I came back to Portland, started my show back uh, in, in June or July. And uh, I can speak from my experience, it's very difficult to find work in this town. And um, it can be frustrating. You can feel, when you're homeless, alienated from society because of the title. So when people see stories like that, you know, there's this, there's this citywide psychosis that if someone is homeless, that they're mentally ill, that that is the causal factor of the homelessness, not that homelessness can actually trigger episodes or a mental health crisis, especially if someone doesn't have, you know, a shower to go to. I live my life very different than the average home-free person, however, and a lot of my time and focus goes towards alternative media, which is a part of my own uh, spiritual practice, uh, shedding light on important issues. And so my, my soul, in a way, is fed in, in a more important way than, than simply eating food. And there's a lot of people that are suffering in this city and in the society that are in the home-free category that have still yet to, to, to find their way to where their, their own personal value um, is not measured against how much money they have. And so there's a lot of people that are suffering in the society because of the society that we're living in. And in a way, a lot of men, a lot of women are products of the society. So I want people to understand as they see Portland get worse after I leave, because I'm planning to leave around March, April-ish, as soon as I can get the funds to get out of here, I'm gonna be leaving. I'm not gonna be parking my trailer that I made myself with a friend around different parts of Portland. Uh, after my friend loses his home, uh, where my uh, trailer is parked, I'm gonna be trying to leave the Portland area. And by the way, at any time, if someone's hiring, just let me know. But I put that word out there before and there's definitely no response, which is fine. My concern now is less with myself because I've determined what my plan is and very concerned about some of you Portlanders that are gonna remain here. Because you're gonna be dealing with some serious stuff once this next wave of California migration comes. Not only migration from California, but the East Coast. And with that will come an increase in crime.